What makes you play a fighting game? Some people play it because of the non-stop action, the thrill of charging your opponent while shrugging off attacks they throw at you. Sometimes, simply being a monster. Or maybe because of its arcadey feel while playing, just running and gunning. Games like Phantom Forces, Arsenal, Rivals, even Untitled Boxing Game might come to your mind. All respectively popular games on the Roblox platform. We can safely call these types of games casual fighting games. On the opposite side though, we see a little more realism. More or less fighting games that require you to think a little bit more about your next move, as you'll find yourself being a lot more pervious to almost any forms of damage. Aftermath, Counterblocks, and Blackout are great examples. These games still get a good following, but are usually nowhere near as big as its casual counterparts, likely due to its more competitive and tactical approach. If you die, you could very well be sitting out for the rest of the round, or risk losing items you spend hours grinding for. But under a very specific genre of Roblox, you may stumble across the oddball fighting game where just one tick of damage is all it takes to decide a winner and loser. Games that are as competitive as they can get. And I'd like to dive into that today, exploring the more unknown side of Roblox. So enjoy, because these are the Roblox games where every hit is deadly. Off the bat, what exactly do I mean by Roblox games and one hit? Put blunt, any game that has a mechanic where you can die or be put at a great disadvantage, whether that being your chances to win a fight, or minor disadvantages such as a slower walk speed after receiving damage from an opponent, usually from one shot or one attack. Some of these games mentioned can have scenarios where one is hit and manages to survive or even come out victorious but overall, you are way more likely to lose. The reason I'm not counting bigger games some may consider one-shot material, like Phantom Forces or Murder Mystery, is because though they most definitely have one-shot mechanics, those games, like stated earlier, fall under the more arcadey side, and may have many ways of not one-shotting opponents or simply not granting them disadvantages from an injury. Here I'm focusing more on the unique and niche games that better center around one-shot mechanics, and I'll start with Fireteam VO21D, an older game from 2017 that simulates modern combat with a big emphasis on cooperation, communication, and teamwork. But the game is generally a tactical first-person shooter with elements similar to Battlefield and Squad. This is definitely a more generic TAC FPS I'll be talking about, but that doesn't take away from the game's immersive combat scenarios. Since it's based off a of modern combat conflict, it sports rifles, RPGs, and more ways to engage or disengage fights. Now obviously, if you were shot, one would think that it's game over, and if you thought that, you'd be surprisingly wrong. Fireteam adds a little twist when you supposedly die. If you take too much damage or your health reaches zero, rather than dying, you'll be incapacitated. From there, a friendly medic has 120 seconds to stitch you up and revive you. The exception to this rule being if you are headshotted or blown up from a nearby explosion, in which case you'll die instantaneously. It is also stated that if you are incapacitated, revived, then incapacitated again, the enemy will be able to shoot or execute you in that state, killing you. There's a lot more to this game than just its cool modern conflict seen on Roblox, with a very dedicated and close-knit community, and I absolutely recommend you check this game out, especially if you have a few buddies to tag along with in VC. But since I'd rather not have this video be 30 minutes long, we'll be moving on to the next game, Bulwark. This game was what originally sparked my idea for this video. Bulwark is a medieval-like player versus player game inspired by chivalry and the likes. It mostly revolves around dueling. Even though the game has a very simple and straightforward way of playing, it manages to somehow have a very high skill ceiling and competitive gameplay style. You are armed with a starter sword, but can buy and use many other weapons from the shop once you've gotten enough currency. All weapons, for the most part, do the same thing as one another, aside from having altered stats and a few unique gimmicks. Once you have entered a duel, there are six main buttons you'll be using while fighting. Your movement keys with WASD and your attack swing, parrying, fainting, punching, and kicking. All of these serve a very important role on if you'll win a duel or not. Stamina is also a very key aspect of this game, but I'll get back to that in a second. Because this game doesn't have a tutorial for new players, I'll give a rundown on how the combat works. You have a health and stamina bar that you must keep track of, with almost every action you do costing said stamina. Using mouse 1 with your weapon of choice will make you swing, shocking I know, and each swing plays into three stages. The wind up, 
the release and the recovery. Even though the release is during the stage in which you output damage, the windup is arguably the most important stage, as this stage can be cancelled in one of two fashions. The first being by fainting, a mechanic controlled by you, and the other is by what is known as flinching, a mechanic controlled by your opponent. Fainting is an essential ability to bait your opponents into blocking or attempting to parry, both of which can be punished easily. Moving on, parrying is as it sounds. You will stand in a stance for a short duration. If you are hit, you will deal damage and knock the player back. If you miss, you yourself will be stunned for a short moment, leaving you vulnerable to attacks. While punching will momentarily stun an opponent and deal no damage if they are in any stance but blocking. If they are blocking and are hit with a punch, it will be block broken and stunned for a short while. And finally, kicking. An ability that when landed deals small damage but significantly knocks your opponent back. And though it can be blocked, it cannot be parried. As stated earlier, all of these actions require stamina, some making you lose more for missing moves. When adding all of this together in a duel, you can see why death can come in many different ways. It is rare for you to be outright one-shotted by a singular attack on the game if all they are doing is simply swinging. But even getting hit by a swing itself puts you in a disadvantage, as you'll be slowed down depending on the weapon that hit you. Bulwark has many other mechanics in its simple fighting scheme that I won't be touching in this video, like its disarm and low stamina mechanic alongside other things. So I highly recommend you check it out yourself and find what you like. And don't be afraid to ask high level players for any tips. The community here is one of the most respectful and helping I've come across on the platform as a whole. Deadline has elements similar to Fireteam, just less battlefield-like and more focused on tactical intensive encounters. A semi-realistic shooter with a big appeal stemming from its extremely extensive customization options for weapons. What makes this game so much more different from its Fireteam counterpart is how much less forgiving it is when compared. If you are hit by one round of just about any weapon in the right spot, full stop, you are dead. Ironically to this video though, this is one of the few games on the platform that doesn't give you a disadvantage when you are taking damage and living, but instead giving you a slight advantage. If you are somehow alive after dueling an enemy and left on low HP, you will receive a noticeable boost in your movement speed. Quite frankly, I think this is an amazing mechanic, as it incentivizes players to still play aggressively, or even more so while being low, as it allows you to swing corners faster and catch someone off guard for the kill. It's to be said that this game draws in quite the competitive audience. After all, with so much freedom to change every single minute detail of your weapon's characterization, it calls for those who already have a decent idea about how guns work and how they handle in specific PvP environments. There are multiple game modes stringing from Team Deathmatch to Push, a game mode where one team is assigned as attackers and another as defenders, with the attacking team having 7 minutes to capture a point. The game also features multiple controls for you to adjust to if you ever decide to check it out. An amazing and immersive game for competitive players or gun nerds alike. Definitely give it a play. Enemy just took Charlie. Blood and Iron a more widely known classic on the platform, Blood and Iron takes place around the Napoleonic Wars era, with historical battles featuring muskets, pistols, and an assortment of melees. Starting off, considering we are talking about muskets and their large, slow-moving soft rounds, it should be no surprise that getting hit by one anywhere to the torso, or even limbs sometimes, will immediately bring you down. Think of getting hit by 12 gauge with buckshot loaded. During battle though, you'd realize how difficult it can be trying to actually hit anybody. Because though they will kill you in one hit, the musket was a horrifically inaccurate weapon compared to modern day ones. So picking when and where to shoot plays a big part of the game. Especially so since missing means you'll have to sit through a lengthy reload that, when interrupted, will sometimes start over entirely. Aside from firearms and cannons, the melee system is a 180 from the one-shot counterparts of them. For example, the Sabri. It takes three swings to kill a full health opponent. But a nice takeaway from the Sabri is its stance combat. You can hold it in a high, medium, and low stance to use to your advantage in a fight, and being very useful when dealing with cavalry. Thanks to the way the mechanics play out in this game, it's very much a high-risk, high-reward shooter, favoring closer engagements for a higher chance at hitting and killing your opponent with one shot, or hacking them down with a melee. And in a match of 20 vs 20, the last thing you want to do is die because you made the decision to chase an opponent into his buddies, sitting out for the rest of the match. Finally, we have Quick Draw. A newer game I've kept a close eye on since it's definitely one of the more unique shooters of this list. 
taking place in the mid to late 1800s Wild West, Quickdraw is an, as of recording this, relatively hard sandbox shooter with no crosshairs, no hit marking, and the highest skill ceiling here. With one major difference in the shooter being that the bullets in this game actually come out of the barrel itself and not your head, which makes hitting your targets all the more difficult. You yourself will be armed with two weapons, a revolver and a Winchester rifle. Both weapons two shots to the body and always one shot to the head at any distance. And if you couldn't tell, this game has a big emphasis on hitting headshots, whether that be in an all-out firefight or simple duel. There is no random bullet spread, as any and all bullet spread comes from your character's movement sway. From what I can tell, there is no downside of getting shot, aside from the fact that you'll likely lose your next encounter. For me, duels are way more fun than just running around and shooting in public servers, so I highly recommend checking this game out with friends. Maybe it's best to call this game an honorable mention on this list since it's so heavily a work in progress. But with such an interesting concept, I had to bring it to light. Almost like a I want to test the game scenario all over again. A good game that's just too hard for most players. I find it interesting how all of these games differ from one another, even though most fall under the shooter genre. And it's something I'd love to see more developers dive into with these types of concepts. Since you could do or create anything with Roblox's engine, it could be a 2D dueling game, or maybe an experience as control heavy as Black Magic with one hit mechanics. Because even though these games may have a high skill ceiling, since all it could take is one or two hits to bring someone down, newer players always have a chance at winning against a more experienced player, whether that be from dumb luck or capital utilizing off of a mistake. Normally, I'd feature more games and videos like these, but it was surprisingly hard tracking down games that have unfavorable combat material, let alone ones that one-shot. If you yourself know any games like these, feel free to comment what they are and what they are about, because who doesn't like variety? Who wouldn't enjoy giving daunting games like these just one shot?